So you've discovered the wonderful world of food photography and you're using your iPhone. You want to level up and you're wondering what gear is going to get me there. In this video, I'm going to share the equipment that I recommend for beginner food photographers. Hi, I'm Rachel Koronek, professional food photographer, helping you take incredible photos that are good enough to eat. So I'm going to be recommending affordable and accessible gear to help you get started. Everything I'm going to recommend is in the description below so you can go and check out those products. The first thing I do recommend is moving on from your smartphone and getting a camera. It's going to allow you to fulfill your creative vision. Now you could get a DSLR or mirrorless and I do recommend getting a second hand one. You don't need the latest and greatest. In fact, the first eight years of my professional career was with a second hand camera. It's going to allow you to save a little bit of money, but get really quality photos. If you can swing it, I recommend getting a mirrorless camera. That's going to help you learn photography, especially as you transition to using manual mode. That is because anytime you change the settings, you're actually going to see the output on the back of the camera. So you change the shutter speed or aperture. It's actually going to show you what that end product is going to look like before you snap the shot. Now let's talk lenses. So if you are getting a new camera, then you're probably getting a kit lens, which is usually a zoom lens. It's usually a lower quality lens, but it is a great place to start and it gives you a range of focal lengths. If you can afford a lens and you're on a full frame, I recommend getting a nifty 50 which is an inexpensive but good quality 15 millimeter lens. If you're on a crop sensor, a 35 millimeter is what you'll want. And these lenses are going to help you take great overhead shots of flat lays. Those of us who are starting out in food photography, we start out shooting natural light. Natural light is beautiful and it's free and it's going to teach us a lot about lighting. So two pieces of gear that are really affordable that I recommend is a four by six foot diffuser. There are a few reasons why I love this. It's large enough to fit into a window, which helps me to create soft light. It's also compact and can fold down easily so I can take it with me onto jobs. It comes with a silver and gold, so you can use that as reflectors. Also it comes with a black side, which will help you cut out light. Another piece of gear that's really inexpensive is foam boards. So I would recommend getting white and black foam boards to help you shape light. It's going to help you reflect light back onto your seat, but also block light as you need to. So you can get various different sizes and I recommend having at least two of each. If you're interested in understanding natural light and looking for the perfect setup for your food photography, make sure to check out my video on the basic lighting setup. When it comes to still life photography, we need to use our hands. We need to use our hands to style and compose a scene, make little changes. So anything you can do to free your hands is going to help you take better photos. So two inexpensive pieces of gear that I recommend are photo clamps and these lighting stands. They're going to help you clip together things like backgrounds to stand up or to hold these foam boards to help you shape light. Another important piece of equipment that help us free our hands is a tripod. So having the camera on a tripod is going to allow us to compose the scene, make little changes, take images as we go. That improves our photos. Now I do have in the description below a link to my ultimate guide on tripods. Now I do recommend if you can investing a little bit more in a tripod because otherwise you'll do what I did and you'll buy a cheap tripod that doesn't work. You'll buy another one that doesn't work for your niche and you'll end up with the third one and you've spent way more money than you need to. The two things you need to look out for with a tripod, it has a good payload so that it's going to hold your camera without wobbling around. And the second thing is that it's going to be able to extend quite tall so that you can capture those flat lays without having to put your entire scene on the floor. Last but certainly not least, I recommend getting an external hard drive. As a new photographer, you're probably going to save all your files onto your computer, which is not a great idea because one, it'll slow down your computer and two, you'll probably lose all your files if you end up having a problem with your computer. So make sure to get two external hard drives so that you can back your photos up onto both and make sure that you have a great backup system. For more tips on how to take better photos, you can join my email list, check out my blog, tolovestudio.com or subscribe to this channel. The beginner and it's going to... So two 
inaffordable is not a word. I keep trying to say inaffordable.